Welcome to This Old App, a podcast about learning, coding, mashing stuff together, breaking things apart, startups, failing, winning, and any other buzzwords we can think of. Hey, Don. Uh, hey. Let's see. Let's talk about chasms. It's been a long okay. time. You look on If you look at the back episodes that we uh, have on This Old App, uh, we haven't talked about this project in a, quite a while, which was due to yeah. work and moving and all that good stuff. But on our previous episode um, with David Rogers, he got he kind of got me thinking about Vue, got me thinking about React versus Vue, and. Um, I decided to start continuing the work that we had started earlier on chasms and I've kind of dove head first into Vue, and I thought we could talk about a number of things that I've learned and the tools I'm using and why and what scares me versus um, what is uh, seems to be going smooth. So yeah, let's jump in. Uh, I mean, I just have to say, as I've as I've always said to my students, and as I've repeated to other people, it doesn't nothing nothing teaches like building in the code sure. world. You can read, you can watch all the tutorials, you can read all the books, you can read all the blog posts, but until you start to build something, create your own edge cases, have to look up documentation nothing really starts to inject that knowledge into your brain quite like here's a problem I, a small problem I have here's a solution I mean it's as simple mm-hmm. as I re- I went through and read most of the ra- view router stuff and you know as I'm building our navigation on the app and I, I'm like oh how do I do this in view I read this but I can't remember and so you start, you go and do your Google search or you go to the documentation and do a control F, command F on there, find the solution. Oh, and then you read a little bit around it and now you understand view router better. So sure. Um, so I've been just learning a ton about how view is structured. But what's interesting is because, and we've talked about this before, because Evan Yu has gracious graciously taken pieces of angular and pieces of um react into the view ecosystem a lot of the stuff i've learned in react i'm like oh this is kind of like this is all the same just structured a little bit differently so i don't feel like i'm in this alien world where well i'm i'm looking at view but now i've given up on the react world i don't have to you don't have to feel that way Right. But the, um, I think the, what's, what I really like about Vue, which also supported what Dave Rogers told us was, or is, when I, like now, the ecos, the technology that makes up Vue starts now with Vue CLI, the command line interface package. And using that, when you do, it's kind of like create React app. You just kind of do view new and it gives you a number of choices. But on the first day, I had but the bundler set up. I had, the, I had two test environments, a unit testing environment and an end-to-end integration testing Um, you could choose on those what you wanted, but I chose to use Jest for unit testing and Cypress for end to end. I think you can use Nightwatch for end to end and maybe Mocha for the unit, but I was able to write a test the first day on both platforms, which was no setup, like no configuration, just write some code and watch a test run. And I'm not a TDD person when I'm learning something. I just can't really get into it that religiously. But 
I'm able to go back now and I'm going to start writing tests for some of the features I've finished on the app. And I know I can get Cypress to work. Um, so that was really amazing. The other choices I've made, well, one router is easily built in. So, and it's, there's only one real router you're going to use. It works really, really well. So I didn't have to bike shed on that. Vuex, the uh, Redux-like um, store, is built in. Is you install it, it's built in. Like you don't really mess around with the continual wrapping of components with the store. Like if you install it into Vue, it's there to use. And none of the when Redux, if you want to have, if you need to have actions with um, promises, you know, asynchronous activity going on. I think you have to install another one, Redux Sage, or I can't remember what the name of it is. But with Vuex, you have an action. If it needs to make an asynchronous call, it returns a promise, and then you can have all the rest of your activities occur. And that was, that's really, it was just like, plug it in, start working on it. Like that's, and and the documentation is great. So I've got all this stuff built together. And in the past, I've built with React an interface to work with Firebase, the Firestore, the, the database we're using on this. But it was a lot of work. I had to build models and have a lot of, you know, I had to make sure that all actions that were conducted on the React side, on the client side, were also kept in sync with the back end. Set up a subscription so that on the snapshots on Firestore, anytime there was a change to the data, that was kept in sync. And it's right. not that hard to do, but it's a lot. You got to set up a infrastructure to do it. And so then I got into, I found someone that wrote a package called View Vuex Easy Firestore. And there's nothing more, less attractive to me than uh, any code package with the word easy in the title. Like that is to me an absolute, <laughs> the worst choice of words is if it's nothing is easy. And, and, right. and I'll get into why the developer, I'm like, right now, the guy that is the kind of the custodian of it, I'm sure he's like, easy is no longer a term to be used with this. But basically what he this person did, this developer on open source did, is set up a completely easy to integrate system for basically taking a I'll say a model, uh, like let's say we've got um, contacts, people that send SMS messages into our system. We need to be able to do basic CRUD on them, you know, create a contact, edit a contact, archive a contact, delete. Um, And then when those changes happen on one app, we need it to propagate to anyone else that's subscribed to it. And so this person wrote a library that works with Vuex. So it has actions and mutations that keeps everything in sync with Firestore. Like if you go into Firestore and make a change, you will see that instantaneously on your client. Sure. I didn't write a dang thing other than you write the actions to just say, hey, add this new contact edit, update this contact, insert, whatever. So I had like, with the only work I've been doing is not on the boilerplate and like infrastructure of, Hey, just subscribe to Firestore. The only thing I've been doing is adding a few additional instructions to my Vuex um, modules, just saying like, Hey, now you're integrated with this Vuex Easy Firestore. You need to subscribe to the backend to Firestore and keep track of things. Changes on client go up, 
changes on server are propagated down. And so the scary part is that there are, there's one major bug in it that the, the developer is working on. He is working on it by himself, so he doesn't have a lot of help, and he's kind of asking for ideas on things. I've, I've thought about getting involved. Like This is one of those open source projects where the work is so good. I love the conventions this person used. And I haven't been able to contribute to a lot of open source just due to time with jobs and stuff. But this is one where I feel like I this person built exactly what I was aiming to build for myself. And right. if I can help him get over the, the hump of some of the bugs, which is related mainly to how browsers um, and Firestore cache certain data and then you can, when you reload the browser, the app, it kind of pushes up data by accident um, and then erases certain things. And it's like, that's a pretty bad bug, but it's something that anyone trying to subscribe like this would have. So it's just one of those things of what I've done over the last two weeks with Vue has, been, has put me in a position where I could build a lot of stuff with Vue now. Like, I, I just know sure. that everything, I, I've learned the basics. What I need to know, learn now is, is kind of like, uh, I need to learn best practices, which I've gotten a lot of that from the React community. I need to learn, I haven't learned about scaling and efficiency. Like, if you were to load this app, it would take a long time. Um, so I really haven't gone into optimization, tree shaking, which is ha like preventing packages from getting bundled that we aren't using, slimming down Firebase so that we're not loading every part of the library that we don't need, stuff like that. Um, server side rendering. I haven't gotten into SSR yet, but I know it's part of the Vue CLI installation. So in theory, I could start. I could set this up as a PWA, a progressive web app immediately. Um, so I've been talking a ton, obviously, but I can say that the approach of built having all the tools in your hands immediately with Vue compared to the kind of piecemeal approach that React has done I would say there's a huge benefit to building an app, at least a prototype, if you wanted to, with Vue. And I kind of go back to the David Rogers um, interview and say, I'm glad we had that because I am really happy with what I've been building so far. Sure. So I've got a project. I need you to build it. And I need it done within a, comp uh, uh, a tight time. Okay. Frame. What are you reaching for? <laughs> Without knowing what the project is? Yeah. Are you reaching for Vue or React? I'm reaching for HTML and JavaScript. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. Because Good I, answer. Don't, I don't have an, I, you got, you have to, <laughs> you have to give me scope. I have to, I have to know what I'm working on. Cause Vue, like a, a single page app isn't for everything. Right. There's so many things that don't need it. Um, if you were to say, hey, I need a progressive web app experience, a single page app experience for a problem. Right now, I'm reaching for Vue. Okay. Like, I, I just feel like this community and this development approach has legs. And it's not a knock on React. I think React has paved the way for a lot of this stuff. But I feel like I could, like, if you were to say, hey, Randy, you got to teach Megan um, a framework now. Like, she's still trying to learn the basics of Node and JavaScript. Yeah. I feel like if you were to tell me, you got to teach Megan now how to do a framework in JavaScript, I'm like, Vue just gets it going. Right. Like, you, the way that you integrate Redux with React and the router with React and make all that work together leads to a lot of what the heck are, are we like your components just have this at the very end of your components, you have this whole like wrapper 
mania where you're just trying to connect everything. And Vue just made it so that, hey, this wrapping, you do it at the very beginning and you don't need to worry about it Sure. Um, again. That's really valuable. There's there's a lot of value in getting abstracting that um, complexity. Doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means I don't have to worry about it right. really. So, so that that so anyway, that's why I would make that choice right. Well, now. and that's that's really you got to the crux of the question, which was you got to lean on something, lean on it hard. What are you leaning on? And and your answer was I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. lean on view. So. Knowing, knowing the different technologies you've chosen through your career, um, this, I think, is the first time you're choosing what I'm going to loosely term as a second place technology, meaning it's not the most yeah. popular one. Um, it's the one that is, is good, but in second place. Do you, do you have any feeling on, on how, if that feels different or, or it's just the right choice? Um, are you making the Betamax versus VHS decision here? I don't, yeah, that, that's all of that's for relevant. Um, so, so like the question I have is when I chose rails, was I choosing the number one then? Mm, I think it was, it, if, so, so different point in the life cycle, probably. My guess is if it wasn't number one, it was the hot thing. Yeah. Um, so Rails was hot. I was in Chicago where Rails is headquartered, right. so to speak. Um, th- and by the way, Vue feels like Rails to me mm-hmm. in the sense of the joy I have using this framework to build with compared to anything else on the front end. Um Node feels more like ASP.net a little bit. Well, and <laughs> uh, in the sense of, go ahead. yeah, and, and that that mirrors you and I talked about this a little last week. Um, that mirrors Greg Pollock's decision to to focus on Vue as well. He he was in the Rails community. Yeah. He he turned to Vue. So there's something there. Um, I don't know if it's the fact and Greg, that both Greg, of them are probably both of them sound very opinionated. Rails is opinionated. Greg, yes. Oh. Yes. And Vue is opinionated for sure. Right. But it, they give you a lot of flexibility. Like you don't have, you can do, I mean, it's, Rails does too, but people f- tend to follow certain things. Um, Greg was definitely more of a pioneer in that his bet was a good year and a half to two years ago. And so... He was betting on, like, I am I feel like I'm betting on if View 3, which is coming out soon, is kind of going to be the Drupal 7 the, the or the, the Rails 3.2, which was, like, when things really solidified for Rails and everything since then has been improvements more than radical changes... I would say Vue 2 is probably that way, but Vue 3 will be, I think, that true maturity sure. version. Sure. And I'm making the bet right before the right before that comes out because I I feel like the risk of me falling into that oh, I just chose a has been is really I just don't feel like that. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm on that now. Rails in, ended up being a, what ten percent of the of the back end framework market. End of the day, when you look at the use the usage across the surveys that happen every year, Rails has plateaued at ten percent. Yeah, and and you now see the new blood is uh, uh, Elixir and Phoenix. Um, Phoenix is the kind of rails of the Elixir world. That one is starting to gain gain steam because it's kind of fast rails. Um, And there's some well-known development teams in the United States that are really championing that on the enterprise level. Yeah, but it it, it certainly, to me, it doesn't feel like it's got the same uh, momentum that rails has it's got noise in the system but 
when yeah. even when you start on rails and 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 we 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 were in constant uh, communication back then you, you were talking about rails and i'm like oh yeah I, I know rails and and yeah that sounds like the hot thing so on and so forth but you mentioned elixir yeah i've heard of elixir you mentioned phoenix i'm like maybe i've heard of phoenix um it certainly doesn't mm-hmm. have that that cachet that rails had at that time so um i don't remember. i think it's not accessible to one if you if you want to talk about pre-optimization that's what you if you were to sell if you or i for a small company project were to select elixir and phoenix it's like, do you need that speed? Right. Like, do you need the learn? The learning curve is steeper. You got to learn functional programming and Elixir, and it's not intuitive if you've grown up in an object-oriented approach. Really, sure. I like I I, I like aspects of it. I mean, I've coded that way before. Um, Lord knows, I coded functional with ASP.NET, and I didn't know what I was doing. Right. Um, but the at the end of the day, it's when I the the key thing I said was the the consultants are championing it for enterprise development. Yeah, you did. I think yeah. the I think Phoenix, and I didn't emphasize it, but I I am now. I think that Phoenix and Elixir are going to be the poster children for enterprise development because Rails isn't fast enough even though it can be if you work like you should on it, that's, I think that's where it's going to go. But to the point is like getting back to, I chose rails, made a bet on that. In the end, it didn't end up winning the ecosphere. It didn't win. It didn't end up winning the back end. I don't know. I mean, I guess node truly has well, no, anything. I don't but. think, I don't think that's a fair statement. I think it's perfectly fair to say there was a, five year period and maybe five is not right but a uh, uh, certainly a long time where if people were out there looking for you know let's let's say somebody comes to you and says i want a project built and i keep hearing about rails can you build it in rails yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it certainly was the number one thing that people kept saying i keep hearing about this um so yeah 10 percent's 10 percent, but it was also the thing um, yeah. if somebody comes to you today that the majority of them are saying, can you build it and react? Yeah. And which leaves out the back end piece completely from the equation. Right. Which, which you still need, which is right. It's only half the equation, but again, we're not talking about knowledgeable people. We're talking about people coming to you with, with checkbooks yeah. saying, I want it built this way because that's the way people with checkbooks usually come. Um, saying saying what they want it built in without really understanding the uh, differences um so uh, that that that's the comparison i'm trying to make here is is yeah. i think you pick the one that that it was going to be easy to pick up uh consulting work in so do you see challenges ahead um or, or, or are you already wrapping your head around if anybody comes to me with that i'm going to be like what let's talk about the 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 React requirement and why you want to go that way, because there's a better well that, that that's a pretty dang good question. Because if you're looking for jobs, Vue is not the one that you would make a bet on right, right now in the job market. Right. Um, React is so dominant in the job sphere that it just doesn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't make. So if that's your goal, getting a gig, getting a job, which should be mine. I mean, I'm working. Uh, I have a paid client, but it won't last. It won't, I don't know how much longer it's going to last. So, yeah, I should be worried about that. But, um, yeah, it's Vue is the better learning framework. It is the easier build framework. It is not the most popular framework. Right. React React is dominating the conversation. It is by far the most predominant um, search term to use on job boards. The recruiters that approach me way more React and Node type stuff. But um, I still would say if you want to learn, like, 
so much of what I've learned in Vue, I just need to go back into React and go, um, hey, how do I how do I do this thing that was easy in Vue? How do I make it work in React? Even though, <laughs> I, even though I think React started it and Vue finished it, um, that's how I would approach it. And so, you know, it's always that argument of what's the better tool. On on the one hand, as a person applying the tool, executing the work, what's the better tool for me to use? As the hiring manager at a company, I have to ask, who can I find to work on this? Right. And what I don't know is will view what I think is going to happen is that the angular people are going to ditch that framework. Right. Because it's just been a horrible Google has horribly managed mismanaged the the uh, progression of angular mm -hmm. over the years. And I think that the angular people look at the chaos around react development, which I guess on that point, I want to say the Dan Abramov is doing a wonderful job of introducing the new hook stuff. Since we talked about it, you know, weeks ago, I really think they're doing, he's doing a kick-ass job at getting react people on the same page. Sure. And so, but at that same point, you know, they keep on moving at such a fast clip that companies get really hesitant to invest, to really bet on things. So I think the Angular folks will love what Vue has to offer. Sure. And I start, um, and that and Angular is a lot more. The enterprise world, I mean, if you look at Microsoft, would bet highly on Angular at the beginning. Um, I still see Angular out there a lot on, we need an Angular developer for our existing front-end app. I think that that's what you're going to see the majority of, well, two things. You're going to see the majority of people move from Angular to Vue. So that's a good chunk. And then the the Chinese equate, part of the equation. Evan Yu, I believe, has, has well, he's I think he's Chinese. I think he may be a citizen in the United States now. But you, there are the Vue framework in China is a growing oh for sure segment for sure and the United States is no longer the only com country you know <laughs> or has never really been the only country doing software but it's no longer the deciding factor on what is dominant in the world and so if China because if the you know Ruby's jet like Japan is where Ruby was strong. That's where right. Ruby started was Japan. And right. so Rails as a part of it became big in Japan. But China is just on the volume side. China is just a different beast. And so I can definitely see where the the Chinese market for development may come, become part of the equation because view has the ability the communication of the of the ecosystem of people can communicate with china sure. and i don't see react one i don't see react making those kind of inroads there just due to the facebook factor perhaps right but which is a different argument i guess on facebook and china but i, I still think there's that segment that I've not seen as part of a framework is that many people potentially working on the framework. Right. And when I look at the, when you look at the view contributors, there's a, there's a lot of international, like way more foreign non United States based um, contributions going to view than I've ever seen with any of the frameworks I've worked with. Yeah. So, so while, while you were talking, I pulled up because I, I I knew that I we, I'd thought this before. Um, I pulled up the state of JavaScript um, survey results, um, yeah. and for for React, the majority of usage is the U.S., uh, you know, Australia, Scandinavian countries. Um, that's mm -hmm. pretty much where it was focused. You flip to the view page, 
and it, it's almost like a mirror opposite um, yeah. on the map. It's South America, it's Europe, it's Russia, it's China. Um, yep. So very interesting comparison there. And I don't know, I don't know why that is, but it's interesting. Um, and it probably speaks to views, long-term viability. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll uh, ever get to that first place to that, to being the hot thing, um, over react. So it'll be interesting. You may end up with a lot of European contracts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, so yeah, it, it, like to me, it's, I'm, I, I guess going back to a point I made earlier, I don't feel like I'm making, I've made a bet on react and view. And I feel like, I feel like I can be very productive in both environments. Sure. So I don't really feel like I'm saying view is the way to go. React is second. React, I won't be doing React anymore. I'll say for our project, I think you'd like view better. I'd like to, I'd like to work with you on view more. Yeah. And if I have, if I bring Megan into the picture, I, I would, I think learning view is just easy, freaking way easier than learning react. Well, so you, you were talking about it's, it's, uh, it, it's transitioned from angular earlier and uh, yeah. I, I've dipped my toe in a lot of waters. I don't, I don't get way steep like you do uh, uh, be, because yeah. I've got other focuses, but I've dipped my toe in a lot of waters and angular and view felt very similar. Um, yeah. with all the, you know, directives and things like that. Um, yeah. and, and that was actually something that turned me off of it, but that was me dipping my toe in. Um, whereas my, where, where I did most of my development in the, you know, early two thousands was PHP. Well, what feels a lot like PHP, um, and the wild west atmosphere, you know, yeah. JavaScript does, you know, react does. So that's just a comfort level. Whereas if I tried to be more disciplined, yeah, view is probably the better answer. Okay. So you've talked about how you went through some t- tutorials and things that, what did you find is the best way to learn? Was it um, just the, just the official documentation? Um, I know that view mastery, Greg Pollock's uh, company had a free weekend. Uh, but I also know that they produce the official videos for the view project. Uh, so the best ways to, d- to do it. So yeah, you're on the right track with what I did. So I did start watching the view mastery free weekend. I then subscribed to the whole year. Um, I thought it was just for the money. Their videos are great to get me started. There are the problem with some of the videos, the earlier ones, I think, was that they did a lot of meta programming kind of like they have a whole segment where they're talking to Evan Yu that goes really deep into programming. And I think it's valuable, but for me ramping up and trying to build something, it was just noise, but that was one section. They have really excellent, um, the building blocks of view, the, from the very basics all the way to, Things you like, you build an app, you're building something that actually would work if you were to follow all the steps. And so I did pretty much those two tracks. They have, there, there is another framework out there called Nuxt, N U X T. Yeah. yeah. Which is essentially um, all the stuff that I've been building. They, it's kind of the rails of view in the sense that they right. are getting a lot of stuff done for you even farther. Um, advanced, but I, I'm a little wary of those things because Evan Yu doesn't really control Nuxt. And so Nuxt, right. ha, Nuxt has conventions that they follow that they've built that don't really go s- side by side with Vue. And for me, I really like the simplicity that view is following and i don't know that i want to add on more layers of someone else's opinions um even though they may be helpful i was like you know what i don't i i'm gonna i'm willing to bring in beautify to take over all the styling and component um construction 
I'm willing to bring in the view easy fire base, but I just was like, I don't need, I don't know that I want all this extra custom layer on top. Um, even though there are pieces of NUX that will help. So I sure. didn't go down the next path, but I do know that view mastery is kind of leaning on the NUX stuff a bit. Um, the new, the new video that came out was related to authentication. And so using Firebase and using easy Firebase store or whatever, I have crafted the ability to do author authorization and authentication fairly easily. But the, I think Nuxt has it built in better. Like maybe it's more turnkey. So sure. I did, I did that amount of learning. Um, and then it's really been documentation. Like I've really read the doc, like with rails, I was horrible. I worked on rails for maybe two or three years without really reading the docs. And I got, I've still got pretty far, but this time around, I'm like, I'm going to read the, like, if I have a question about view router, I'm going to read this section. And if I have a question about, um, if I have a question about the view X, I'm going to read what they tell you, what it's doing, how to do it. Like I'm trying to be a little more, a little slower with code it, copy and paste this example and customize it. You know, I want to really understand what I'm doing better. And yeah. that's just maturity maybe along my, in my process. So yeah, I, I, that's what I've been leaning on, really. Yeah, and that that's where that's where dipping my toe in a bunch of waters hurts. Is I usually am dipping my toe in following tutorials and not digging in, like you said there. Yeah. So there's, but I do know there's um, a guy named Anthony Gore, who's doing. He's got a video series. I don't know that there's enough content in it for me to spend another hundred plus dollars for a year. So I haven't, but he's, he put, there's like a view has all the newsletters. It's got all the blogs. There's uh, Rachel Drasner. I think she is a, she, she publishes on, she's a core team member of view. She publishes on CSS tricks. Um, she puts out a lot of content. So like, I feel like the, the most important thing for someone that's getting on board is that you understand the basics of you and then you get to understand how should I solve problems and what packages are available to do it. Sure. And that's where I feel like view mastery does a terrific job of introducing you to packages at the right time. And mm -hmm. I mean, of course, Greg and the, there's one other person working with him that he knows how to produce videos. It's not like they are not doing it as interactive as um, code school, but they're doing it pretty close. So the video quality is outstanding. The visual representation and examples are great. And it's still got that code school feel, but it feels like they're becoming, that they are getting to be a little more efficient because I know code school, sure. the production cost of code school stuff is like rails for zombies was huge. And I don't think they're spending that, but it also felt good because view mastery gives back to the core team of view. Right. And right. so I was paying, you know, a hundred plus dollars for that, but I also a chunk of it went to the development of view and that's pretty dang cool. So that's the path I took. That's what I would recommend. Um, if, if anything, just take some, like do some of their free courses that are available and just get introduced to it. That would be my kind of recommendation, but yeah. And I, and I would no, say, uh, go ahead. I was going to say in, in reference to your point about them contributing back to the project, they uh, tweeted out, a couple weeks ago that since May of 2018, due to their their uh, policy of giving 25% of all revenue back to the project, they've given almost $50,000 back yeah. to um, the Vue.js project. And I think that's significant because it took Rails 10 years before they got that kind of income. Like 
that kind of they didn't have community driven funds for rails for a good decade and they didn't need it because DHH was in charge and he is like base camp was funding everything. But for a community to start getting that income going at this early age is pretty significant. I think um, there's going to be bigger companies that fund the life of it, you know, for sure. Sure. But it's still to get a kind of independent Funding coming in like that is important too. And I think it's nice that Vue is getting it in that manner. Because, like we said, Google took over Angular and then kind of hacked it up. And that's not what yeah. you want. You don't, I don't want Evan Vue to leave. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, the next people are now in charge because they're the only ones getting money in the first place. And not that I have anything against Nux, I'm just saying I trust Evan Yu a lot more <laughs> right now based on sure. my knowledge. The other the other thing that I want to talk about learning. I use CodePen and Sandbox IO, is that the name of it? Yeah. Um those are these what CodePen and Sandbox IO are able to do to I mean Sandbox IO for a front-end node-driven app is really freaking amazing. And CodePen is pretty close to it. But I think what's nice is that you can do, you can build a view single page component in CodePen in a matter of minutes, if not half a minute. And that's can just get you started. Like I didn't need a I didn't need to download anything on my computer to, to actually build my first view component. And that was really cool. And then sure. when I started to, when I wanted to get a little more involved, I was able to, to build a view component in sandbox IO and build a test for it, like an auto, like a just test for it. And I was like, that's pretty sweet. Like I didn't have to set up this infrastructure on my computer and I could share it with someone else. So sure. <clears throat> right now in the front end development world, the amount of tools available because back when we started, the JS bin was the best, right. I think. And what we've evolved to in the browser is just amazing. So I would I would sure. say, get yourself at least CodePen um, or Sandbox IO. I think CodePen is easier to get started with, and you can build your very first view tool, and then watch the view mastery videos. Um, subscribe to the newsletters that are out there and just start to pay attention to the community and what they're talking about building. View 3 sure. is coming down the pipeline. Um, I don't know what changes it they're proposing in it, but I don't think that it's like a... I don't think it's an upgrade nightmare type of scenario. I think it's more of, hey, we're making improvements that we've been looking at for a while. And yeah. if you're into the React hook stuff, I know that Evan Yu has been showing examples so that you can do very similar things in the view view world or like taking the best of what React has to offer and making that accessible in view. Um and that's that's what I got right now. Okay, cool. So just uh, just to clarify, it's codesandbox.io. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if you go to sandbox.io, you'll just get a screen that says "Welcome to Nginx." So <laughs> I don't know what those folks are building, um, but that's not what you're looking for. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, oh, the other thing I inve- I kind of plugged in. Yeah. Material design. Oh, okay. Um, grew up in Bootstrap, of course. So Bootstrap and Rails were kind of a very common uh, front-end styling framework, component-based infrastructure, jQuery, bonded to jQuery. And Vue, Vue has a, like, there's something called Vueify. Every, everything has a view like pun in the names, typically. Sure. If not, either it's view something or I'm going to make a pun out of it. So Vueify is the one of the stronger front end um, libraries. And so, honestly, I've done 
maybe two or three. If I, if I were to show you what I've built so far and told you I only did four lines of CSS instructions, I think you'd probably just your draw would, would drop. Sure. Because what I have on my browser in front of me right now looks like what would have taken me to a week of CSS to <laughs> somewhat get to. Sure. And Beautify with using material design components that follows the material design library really close. Like I haven't seen any differences is man. It's been so easy, like scary easy. Like it's so easy that it's scary for someone trying to, that would need to learn CSS because I'm like, you're not going to learn a dang thing of CSS that you need by mm -hmm. using this. Mm -hmm. But for me, trying to build a prototype or our first version of this app to interact with our engine, um, it's like, it's like, this is saving me huge chunks of time. And I may be, I'm able just to like, say, I need a, a menu here. I need a tooltip. I need a card to display this data. Um, I need, I need a, a really easy to do select box that I can do with auto fill and like, or auto complete. And it just works. Like, sure. All I'm doing is adding a few attributes and this sucker is doing exactly what I want. And I'm like, I'm not even adding JavaScript to this. Like, this is crazy. Like it, Beautify is what, whenever they talk about these front end frameworks and building components, Beautify proves it. Beautify ha it proves that you can create really great working components and then hand them off to someone else sure. to use. And I've, I mean, I've stumbled along the way trying to get a little, a few things to work here and there, but all it means is I needed to read the documentation better. So that's a, now that's a dependency. Like that's tied in tight right now to what I've built. I could, I could pull it out and then do HTML for everything if I wanted, but I don't know. It's so easy and it, it looks, it's, it works so well. Um, I would say that if we, if we were to, were to launch and then um, people like we were starting to be successful with the app, I would probably hire a material design designer mm -hmm. to say, can we spruce this up a little bit so that it looks like it, it still functions like material design, but it has a little bit of our own unique design elements to it um, on style. Like that's what I would probably do. Sure. But yeah, that's a, so I'm trying to think what else I've added. Maybe I should look at the package. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it right in front of me. Uh, viewed. No. I added something called view headful, which gives you better control over the the uh, meta tags, but this is not really an app that I need SEO for. So I don't have to do a ton there. I do, you right. do want, a, you do want some good meta tags for screen readers. I think that's still important. Sure. Um, oh yeah. Like this app, as long as we keep making, if, as long as we put the translations in correctly, this app will be launched with English and Spanish languages. And if you were to come to me and go, we need German, all it would be is like, hey, let's send this translation file to a company. There's a comp few consultants that do it for you. And just say, hey, translate, give us a tra the translations for these um, keywords, so to speak. And, and right now, if you go in the app and you just say, I'm, I want to be a, like Spanish locale, everything just instantly switches throughout the app. It's so okay. freaking so, easy. Yeah, so so I want to dig on this a little because uh, I've I've uh, I've managed internationalization projects before, so yes. this sounds interesting. So I don't think you 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 did say you have to send the translations out, even Spanish, correct? 
well, you basically you have a file, yeah, that that you use with it's like a JSON file, yeah, and it's tied to the locale. So I have an EN and an ES right now. Why and did, why, how did how did you get the ES file? Oh, I created it. And, and then you, I went to, you put the I, went to Google tra- I went to okay. Google Translate just in English. So it's not it's not it's so, not so, okay. ready. It's just easy to implement yes. internet translation, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's not it is my I'm sure a, a Spanish speaker would look at my translations and go, Your app is horrible in the sense of right. reading these things. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely not um but, but here, the point I think I'm trying to make is if I take the Spanish, my, if I take my Spanish locale file and send that to yeah. a consultant and say, yeah. hey, fill these in for what's realistic for our technology use in, in Mexico. And they would be able to fill it out without a lot of trouble understanding what I'm trying to do and just give me the translations without any other issues and because all i because all i have to do is make sure that that es file matches the keys of my english file and that there's right. a translation there for it if there isn't it falls back to english so well, i i know one of the other issues with internationalization is like um i'm gonna pick on german and and i always pick on german for this example i know that there are, in some cases uh, there's there's words in English that that are very short, and then the word in German is is significantly longer. Um, so that messes with your UI problems, and that's another internationalization problem. I assume this doesn't yeah. solve that problem. Yeah. This just makes it easy to get the translations in, and then you you work with it as far as the uh, the UI aspect of it. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. It, so, it's interesting because the only other place I've seen it where there are, and, and this is me with all my vast experience, where there are, are locale files um, is Alexa. Uh, when when you do Alexa mm. skills, there there are there are the same thing JSON files with yeah. um, that you can put your translations in. Now the good thing is over on Alexa, your UI is less of an issue. Um, it's yeah. all about it's all about the language. Um, so that's why it's significant there. But no, that's an interesting point. The other, let's see, view, oh, view validate, validate is made it easy, really easy for me to validate forms. Um, yeah. Super, super easy. And so that was a really good package to add. I mean, I feel like I have the foundation of a CRUD app for anything we would want to build. Sure. Not just like I've got a few crud model like create a new one, edit a new edit an existing, see the index, the list, look at the detail of one, the show. I've got those set up for two different three different categories right now. I just need to start tying them all together on like how they work, how they interact. But this is exactly, I feel like I'm getting to that point in Rails where I had the foundation so solid that I'm just like, yeah, throw me your new problems and I'll adjust to make them work in Rails. And that gave me a lot of confidence when I was trying to sell work in Rails because I just was like, yeah, I, I can now work on the edge cases. Before I was trying to get basic stuff done. Um, right. Right. And tying it to, I had to do a little bit of work. Firebase is very interesting because Firebase is this kind of like living, constantly connected um, back end. And so I had to do some learning about how authorization is maintained and triggered and how to do, like how to protect routes and stuff from... Like you don't have permission to do that. I still, I still sure. need to put in a permission based um, system so that certain only certain roles with certain organizations, like you have to be a member of this organization and have this specific role for the uh, authorization piece. So I probably I need to either do two things. I need to either look and find a 
view authorization library, or I just need to create one um, for my, for what I'm doing. And I found them to some, like on the Rails side, the authorization libraries have had kind of a checkered past of ease of use. So I'm just going to have to see what happens there. But yeah, I guess the bottom line is I've been able to find solutions to the problems that I have not had previously very quickly with Vue. Huh. And I feel like I'm getting that foundation of, oh, yeah, and that, like I can I can get 70% of this sucker done in a very short time, and then we'll start to tackle the complex stuff. Sure. Which will, which will be, you're not going to go to Stack Overflow and find someone that did this or that. Right. Now, the funny thing is, typically front-end example apps are either to-dos or chats. And I have to build a chat piece for this. <laughs> and I'm just like, if I build this all by, like, if I build this completely by myself, that is, will be the dumbest example of construction of an app ever because there's so many examples of how chat should be done. Right. So I, what I have to do is find some good examples and see how they approached it. But um, the question is going to be, can I build it in a way that makes you want to use Slack less, the plugin that we have for Slack? Yeah. Um, and I think it may be not around the chat because I think, of course, Slack is handling the chat really well. I think it's going to be more around the assets that are sent through, whether it's a message or a video or an image. What can you do with those? Because Slack doesn't right. give us a lot that we can do with that. But, right. but in when I have the like code base control over the chat room, I can give you all sorts of tagging and organizational related features that we just can't make happen in Slack. So that's yeah, and I think that's an interesting. interesting that's interesting, and and we've talked about that before. We've talked about yeah. it in order to make it. Um, a, a, a viable product for for sale. Um, not everybody uses Slack, and yeah. especially in the industry I'm in, they probably don't. Mm -hmm. So if we give them a web based interface, um, that may uh, that may be just fine. Yep. So that's all I got right now. Eventually, I need to show this to you, but we'll yeah, yeah. we'll have to do that soon. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing in addition to normal work, um, and that, and so we'll just I'll keep on plugging away. Eventually, we'll have to set up a we'll have to get to the point of letting your folks test it sure. and to see if it's worth us its salt, and then to see if we can sell it. So that'll be the next right. point. But I, I still. I, I'm, I don't, I guess I could say just like with some, with, with, with all the fantasy sports stuff that I built with um, PHP and .NET back in the day, despite the fact that I, that we both left the business, so to speak. Um, right. I still look back on those and go, you know what? L building that stuff is what set the pace for all the rest of my career. And right. I feel like this at this point with the, the with the whole paradigm shift to single page apps um, or app kind of driven app driven development clients kind of things, I feel like um, this is I'm now making progress on the second stage where with rail rails moved me away from Drupal. Rails was to me, this is how I want back end server development to be. And right. now React started moving me away from Rails, but React, is, I feel like Vue is to me personally what is getting me like over the hump of, oh, I'm going to be really productive with this. Sure. Um, but I, I'm also curious to see how native script uses view to produce 
um, React Native type apps. Right, right. And I just, I haven't gotten that far, but I'm curious to see how that tr- all translates. Sure. Well, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll get together and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at it and I'll probably start digging back into it and seeing what I, I never got deep enough into React where I'm too worried about uh, losing that now, any knowledge there. So, yeah. um, very cool. All right. Well, excellent. Um, and I guess we will talk another day. Sounds good. Later. All right. See ya. Thanks for listening to this old app. Show notes and previous episodes can be found on our website at www.thisoldapp.online. Reviews on Apple iTunes are always appreciated and help promote the show. For questions, comments, or things you would like to hear on future shows, please email us at hello at thisoldapp.online. Show music is Guns Blazing by Fab Claxton, licensed by Pond5. Voiceover work by MeganVoices.com. You'll hear from us soon. <laughs>